It's 5.15. I'll call our meeting to order. Nice to see everybody. We have a quorum, although we're, we've got some folk missing, but uh, five is a quorum. So let's move forward. Um, is Margaret expected or is she? Margaret is away. Oh, OK. Have not heard from Amy or Ada. Jane uh, tells us that this time is inconvenient for her. She would prefer that we meet later. OK. Um, and Joanne? Mom and, I, and Joanne has has been somewhat um, off the radar. I, I should reach out to Joanne. Okay. I will do that. It would be really great if we could bring yeah. her back in. I know she she was yeah. dealing with a lot of family um, right. issues. Um, what's, your, what's your background, Sarah? It's not public. Um, Nope, that's Unity Park up in Great Falls. Uh, last year's uh, Harvestdale Day of Dance with Jugger Meadow and Wake Robin. Nice, nice. Yeah, those are my people. <laughs> Looks like Sunday in the park with George. <laughs> <laughs> that's with correct. George. <laughs> yeah, we're hoping for a good good day this coming Saturday too for a little bit bigger event. Nice. All right, so we have uh, in our emails um, our clerk's report from September 13th. So if you haven't had a chance to spend a little quality time with that, you could take a moment yeah. or two moments or. Yep. And I think, yeah, I think the only thing I thought of as a sort of follow-up is that maybe since that evening we now have an actual date for when the high school presentation is going to be at the library so that might be that might be part of your agenda that you have in mind already but that was something that stood out to me any other comments on the minutes what is the yellow highlight is that modified or no, that was, um, we started by, by suggesting that those were items that needed further attention, Mark. Oh, okay. Probably should do some sort of legend, though, on the minutes that the highlighted items are items that, you know, or we'll, we'll follow up or something. Kayla, how do you want me to note that? Yeah, I, I just wanted because I've I've used that in the past when uh, I have to make corrections to minutes. I'll send them back and say, "Here's what I corrected." So I was like, "Oh, did I miss the first round of?" You know. We we did. Um, I think several of us said that we found it really really useful to have action items highlighted. So mm -hmm. I don't know if there's a different way to do it, but for me, this is really useful. Yeah. I will take a motion to approve September minutes. I would so move. Second. Second. Any further comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Yep. Okay. Great, thank you. All right. Um, we don't have a Hopkins report, although there's Hopkins stuff coming up under old business. So I'll, I'll move forward to that. Um, so we do have an event coming up um, on Tuesday, November 9th, 6 p.m. at the Hadley Library. It's 6 p.m.? Mm-hmm. Although there'll be materials on display that will be on display before and after that. And maybe I think we'll be left there for some period of time. I'm not sure how long. Um, Is that, that's the posters? Yeah, so students, okay. students projects will be on display. And then, so here's um, 
I'm going to put this this verbiage in the chat, both for the minutes and for everybody. Um, this comes from Jason Burns. He suggests that the event is called Unknown Peoples. And then subtitle, A Night Featuring Hopkins Academy Student Projects on Indigenous Peoples of the Western Hemisphere and a Student Presentation on the Background and History of Columbus Day. Hmm. Sounds great. Right. I, I wish there was a better word than unknown. Forgotten? Huh. I'm just trying to think, what if I was one of the native peoples in New England that's still here <laughs> in spite of like my friend Marge saying, oh yeah, every town has their story about the last Indian in so-and-so town. And, and of course she was married and had children like, Okay. Well, that's that's okay. the point. They're unknown. That's the point. They're we don't know that they're here. But they're unknown to some people. They're, they're unknown to some people. people. Yeah, I think true. that's the point Sarah's making. Yeah, but they're not unknown to themselves. <laughs> Un, unrepresented? Maybe unrecognized. That, maybe that's unrecognized. Yeah. yeah, we could try and kick that around to come up with us. Yeah. A more positive right or hopeful or whatever right right i like unknown be unknown because yes they're known to themselves but that's not who we're talking about we're talking about the rest of the world not knowing that they're here right that's true yeah and recognize unrecognized also gets that across but yeah they really have vanished from memory and that's the point i think we need to bring them back. Yeah. Well, we need but, to, to acknowledge that you're here. Right. Not bring them back. Bring them back, but shine a light them. on them. Yeah. Shine a light on them. Bring the knowledge back. Yeah. Yeah. But I also. It's an interesting thought because that sort of ties into the whole difficulty that New England tribes especially have with getting federal recognition. I, I do, I definitely see the point that you're making, Sarah, about how sort of hurtful saying unknown could be yeah. to someone in our community who is indigenous. Um, yeah. And, and somebody who ever talked about shining a light, I like that metaphor, and I'm wondering if there's some way to incorporate that. Well, unrecognized has a double meaning since you just mentioned right. that they're not recognized officially by the United States. And most people don't recognize that they're still here. Mm -hmm. So maybe that's a better term, unrecognized peoples. We could suggest that. Yeah. I'll be glad to go back to Jason and just... Um, yeah share these yeah. thoughts, see what, what he thinks about it. My vocabulary brain usually kicks in when I'm doing something else. Like, it, you know, it's right. like you're trying to solve something and it comes to you when you're like in the shower. Yeah. Right. So, so I, okay. if, I th if I think of a word that I think is, we might want to consider, I'll, I'll share it. Keep a pencil in the shower. There you go. <laughs> A crayon not, you can write on the wall with. Not, not, <laughs> not an electric pencil. Crayon, yeah, a crayon's better, yeah. Yeah. I, I do feel like it, it would be powerful for us to um, publicize this. Yeah. Jason Burns is willing to talk to media about it. Um, Patrick Berezo is willing to talk to media about it. So I think part of the work of our committee could be to help raise the awareness of this. I think another task of our committee is, um, yeah. is refreshments. 
So I think maybe the easiest way to do that is for, for me to send out an email and to everyone on our committee and see who's willing to yeah. provide what. Yeah. Great. So that's all I got about that. So I will still kick around uh, title for it. And uh, I think, you know, I think the points that are raised are so interesting and touchy, difficult. Right. Yeah. And it really points up, you know, like I guess Mark has harped on the fact that we're all white people here trying to wrestle with issues of people of color. And we, you know, we will, we might make our best guess, but we might not have a very good sense of what that best guess ought to be. <laughs> um, right. I, I feel like we're a bunch of mammals trying to think what, what's bothering the fish, you know, it's, it's, yeah. out, it's out of our, our, uh, right. our okay. Yeah. Inherently. Yeah. Anybody know some indigenous people? Well, there's one I can think of offhand, but she's so busy. I work with a gentleman that's, um, I think it's at some degree Native American, I think. According to how easy or difficult it might be, might open up a conversation with them. Yeah. Yeah. I'll at least, you know, pop an email off and see if I get a reply within the next couple of days. She might be too busy, but. Thank you. Okay. Might be a group at UMass, uh, like student group. I don't know if there is, but that's also a potential. Mm. I. I be willing to look into that. It would also be interesting to find out why the students propose this title. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I'm not sure if, if it came from them or if it came from their teacher. Yeah. I see. Okay. I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks like the students labeled it indigenous peoples and Jason is the one who suggested the title Unknown Peoples. Mm. I don't know, but that's what it appears to be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, calling it Indigenous Peoples is right on the nose. We might as well, we could do that. I like that because of the recognition of the day too, yeah. the holiday. Yep. 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 I got things bouncing through my head that just don't quite nail it. I was thinking like invisible natives. No, that's that's not quite where we're trying to go either. Thinking indigenous peoples right on the nose. Mm. Yeah. And it ties in with with their name for the project too. All right, I'll go back to Jason with this conversation. Um, <clears throat> So our survey slash study committee I think well I think we were tasked with um, summarizing the three uh, sets of notes and to provide them to Margaret which I think we did mm -hmm. well Margaret was going to do one and Wayne was going to do one and I was going to do one and um I finished then, mine today. Okay. Finally. And then Margaret was going to consult with um, Dr. Court. At yeah, she's the one. She's the one who's going to contact him with those she, notes. She is. Right? Yes, and she. The last conversation I had with her was that when when she had the complete set, um, that she would go back to him. So she does, and. I think she will. And I would be happy to assist her um, with that too, Kayla. So I'll make that offer and put it in the notes. Yeah. Highlighted in yellow. 
I highlight it in yellow so I don't forget. Great. Yeah. yeah, and I guess here's where my question comes in. Do we want to also include the responses that we got to the questions that Joanne uh, wrote out for us? Like I got the one from the oh. senior center and Pat, you got one from one of the churches, I think. And oh yeah, that's we can do that. Sure. I remember which other ones we got. I was that was one of the yeah, reasons I was trying to go back through our old minutes and sort of how many of these do I actually have? Before I had a printer. So if Pat and Sarah, if you would forward those to Margaret. Sure. Inclusion. Great. Under new business, um, I was wondering if anybody wanted to share any thoughts from our joint visit with the Housing and Economic Development Committee. Oh, yeah, that was great. Um... Yeah. I was overwhelmed with how complex these town committees are. Um, a, a great admiration for the people that have served on them for many, many years. Um, but felt sort of out of my water. Yep. And, and also stunned at the complexities of town rules and regulations. And as usual, see how people who want to get around the rules find ways to do it. Sometimes, yeah. Human nature. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry that I missed those. Um, I'm going to go back and watch those. Uh, I think I found one of them on the Hadley media site, but I'm not sure I saw them both. So I'm gonna watch those. I know Bill has a, uh, just a plethora of knowledge with his, you know, 25, 30 years on the planning board. Um, you know, between Bill and um, Joe Zagrodnik and uh, Jim Maximoski, they, you know, combine their like a hundred years of knowledge, you know, so there's- uh, Yeah, we're so lucky to have them. Yeah. Well, I, I think, and it would help me to process, to think about sort of the main points that were brought up. So the, the main concern obviously is, is affordable housing, both and they talked about capital A and mm -hmm. smaller A. So right. capital A affordable, what it, which is, you know, as defined by, by the state, yeah. the state, but also the reality of people in our community who would like to remain in the community or would like to have their children able to live or their their teachers or firefighters mm -hmm. right. who live in the community concerned about the affordability of of middle-class housing so that that's sort of the umbrella issue but feeding into that are the needs on the infrastructure um the the guidance that the town has in place for what kind of building is permitted Yeah. So those were the key points that I took away from it. And I don't know if anybody else had yeah. other key points. I was sort of thinking about, and also from our meeting with Bill and the sort of thinking of, um, you know, sort of processing that and reading the master plan documents that there are natural limits in where we can build housing. You know, we obviously can't build on wetlands and we're right to protect our farmland and we should protect as much of it as we possibly can. We're right to protect 
sensitive habitat and forests, that kind of stuff. And that's only going to become more important with climate change to protect those areas. And then we have human made limits, which are the things we forget we can change, but we can, which are like what type of structure is allowed where and lot size and, and things like that. Of course, then there's the stuff in the middle that's like, well, you have to have a certain amount of lot if you're going to do a septic system. Otherwise, you, you know, we, we see the disaster that is <laughs> not paying attention to that. And then sort of also kind of in that gray zone is the sewer system and the water supply which there's not a whole lot we can do about the well supply. I don't think, maybe, I don't know, complicated. And then the sewer capacity, you know, we're, we're close to hitting the, the ceiling of that and that could only be increased at great expense and complexity. And again, still limited by how much water can our well produce or can we trap from runoff, you know, can we can we change how much is running off from these more intense rain events that we're going to continue to get? I don't know. So there's like there's some things we really can't and shouldn't change at our peril. There's some things we definitely could change, like dividing some of these big houses into two units or something, two or three units. And then there's other things that well we maybe could do something about if we really pulled up our panties but whoa <laughs> and then i'm sure he also touched on the um the risk of unintended you know consequences you know you want to make housing more affordable but you there's a um i don't know i can't say that there's ever been a survey i don't know how broad it is but there's a certain amount of uh, momentum against what they refer to negatively as student stuffers. You know, if you right. make it too affordable, someone not, you know, you want it to be affordable so that people that grew up here or, or want to give back to our community can live here. Um, but it's an opportunity for someone who's looking to profit can build a house and get, you know, you know, you've seen them around town where there's, you know, six, eight, ten cars parked there and right. and a dumpster outside and, right. you know, right. and those are, no, I'm not going to say across the board, but by and large, those are not, um, those are transient students going through and not generally contributing to the community in terms of committees and other social activities because they're they're here in the valley trying to get what they can from their institution and then they're gone well it's not the students issue it's the people who are renting to them that's causing it's, the problem it's the profiteers yeah 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 so i mean maybe we have duplexes but they have to be owner occupied right yeah yeah so there's yeah there's it's I don't know. I found it in enormously complex. Yeah. And every time I thought I was understanding something and saw an opening for a solution, then Bill brought up another regulation that <laughs> it's been right. in place for a long time and said, uh, but you can't do that. Or the sewer system seems to be the huge issue. Water yeah. and sewer is the big limiting factor. And someone mentioned uh low-rise multi-person apartment buildings and yep. the other issue is uh frontage on route nine which is zoned for business uh we shouldn't take that up with housing people but they didn't say anything about how close to route nine things are available. So right. it's just so complex that I couldn't make sense of it. And I don't have, I don't hear an immediate solution and they didn't seem to have any. And you do want, generally you want affordable housing to be um, easily accessible to like the um, commuter bus 
you know. Yeah, two blocks from Route 9 is not terrible yeah, to, yeah. to get accessibility. It doesn't have to be right on Route 9, but I, I didn't get a clear idea that there, the space within walking distance of Route 9 is any more available than stuff on Route 9. Right. I came away knowing the problems, but not any solutions that anybody had to it. Right. I think it might be one of those uh, one of those complex issues that that just requires, you know, like the elephant that you didn't take a bite out of it to to look at all the complexity and and I'm I'm sure the committee has has done this kind of thing and really look at some of the things, categorize them and just look at look at one thing right after the other because otherwise it does become overwhelming in its complexity. I, I have to say, I, I have been so impressed um, with Bill and then the conversation. I mean, yes. I think they're just people who are really interested in the topic. And I actually, you know, being a relative newcomer didn't know that. And so that's... Um, exciting and invigorating for me to know that there are quite a few people in Hadley who really want to discuss this and um, attend to the needs of of people interested in living here. I, I find that really in, inspirational, I guess. Yeah. I think the one place that I was aware of overlap in our committees is the study that we're, we're yes. embarking on. And uh, and it's and and maybe somehow the work that they're doing, we we could find some gather some information that would be useful. Yes, the work that they're doing as we embark on a study, community study. Well, yes, Kayla. And one of the things that I thought was excellent um, was Molly's point that as we think about survey questions, we consider the questions that were asked. Um, for the master plan right right so that there's continuity i thought that was just excellent or or that we partner with the senior center i think it might be too late for that but we we don't all do our individual surveys but we work in collaboration i thought that was just an excellent point mm -hmm. great um uh Aside from what you just mentioned, Pat, did anybody else hear anything encouraging in all of that complex report? Well, the mall issue, right? Looking at the mall and, and the, the storefronts and, and anticipating vacancies or looking at vacancies and, and looking to see if, in fact, that could be utilized for some, for some housing. I, I think that was proposed, no? Yeah, yeah, that's something that the pyramid company is doing a pilot project on in Kingston and they might, I think they're looking at these huge sprawling properties that they have and thinking, oh, maybe we're not going to be able to fill all of these with retail anymore. Maybe we're going to have to find something else to do with this footage. And I mean, if they pull it off correctly, you know, so that there are units that are affordable for people who like work at the mall, um, you know, without making it company housing, which is creepy and gross, um, really creepy and gross. And we need to make sure that doesn't come back. Um, yeah, it could be. That struck me as being so ephemeral and far in the future that it didn't yeah it doesn't address our current need. need yeah i didn't see it as a positive thing and maybe i should have but i saw it as something that might in 10 years happen if this and if that and it but i yeah. didn't yeah did anybody hear anything else that they thought showed progress in what that committee was doing and solutions they were thinking about down the road to problems that we're banging up against, such as water and that kind of thing. Well, I, I would agree that that idea of multi-use is, is an, in, a really interesting one. Yeah, I think so. 
adaptive reuse is also very green instead of you know getting the huge carbon footprint of new construction right um, can... and there's an element of affordability in that too that that isn't present when you're buying new lots correct right, right. only if they decide to make it affordable right because that is in, in once in retail it's very prime real estate yeah. yeah, but I remember Bill also talking about some kinds of business are not compatible with housing. You know, you wouldn't want to put housing next to something that had a lot of diesel trucks spewing fumes or, you know, things like that. Um, and also, I was thinking, well, there's a sort of the, uh, the converse of that. There are certain kinds of housing that you wouldn't put right next to business. And I don't see McMansions going in where a big box store used to be and people paying big bucks for that like they would for a you know, five bedroom house on a acre and a half lot somewhere off route nine. You know. Is there, is there any room for anyone in the, in the community to contribute to that discussion, or is this just something we've learned might happen between Pyramid and the mall, and it might happen in the next few years, we don't know when. Is it just pie in the sky, or is um, it realistic? Well, I think Molly was saying that they were gonna invite the person who manages this mall to come and speak with their committee and that they would that way they would maybe learn more about what pyramid has in mind maybe we could find out when that's going to be and sit in on it at least if it, i don't know if it's going to be a zoom or an in-person meeting probably zoom uh that means we could sit in even with our cameras off and it just at least listen that kind of touches on a thought i had that um it's not to go too far off on a tangent but we can sometimes find that we've developed into assumptions that may not be broadly held or broadly uh, actually as beneficial as we think they are. For example, I remember uh, some discussion, and I think it was relative to maybe the treehouse um, community or something like that, where society had, had thought, well, the elderly don't want to be around all the screaming children and the screaming children, you know, and so let's separate them. And there was this like, no, actually it's, there's a lot of benefit to integrating, vertically integrating communities. And, and so I was thinking of that when we were talking about the fact that, you know, we don't necessarily want to be raising kids right next to the commercial, but you know, it's not black and white. I mean, back in the day, you would live above your shop and raise, you know, um, so, you know, the less commute, the more time you have with your kid. I don't know. There's right. It, it, it's not, like I said, it's not, it's not black yeah. and white. That's still true today. Look at Amherst. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, downtown. Of, downtown Amherst is full of apartments on the second floor. Right. Right. Yeah. And there's definitely parts of Hadley that would lend themselves to that. You know, this this stretch through the center of town towards towards the east. I'm not sure how much more I would densify the flood zone, the flood plains areas with climate change advancing, but further east, you know, from East Street maybe would be more uh, compatible with that kind of idea. If only they would ask us. Well, I think, you know, people and for people who are watching this um, on Hadley Media, I would suggest reaching out to the Housing and Economic Development Committee and expressing an interest in, in that or the planning board or both. Uh, on to open agenda. I had a question to put out to the committee for ideas. Uh, we have a special town meeting coming up on October 16th. Is there any way our committee could be represented with flyer or some something? 
Any thoughts? Sorry, what was the, any way it can be represented with what? Um, we had a flyer at the, flyer. there was an event at the mm -hmm. senior center for the community. And actually the, the last town meeting in the spring, we had I, a flyer. I think that would be a good idea. Um, we, we should think prove. about what we wanted to say, uh, yeah. but I think to let people know we're here, those who take the flyer and are interested enough to take it, it yeah. could be very informative. And I just like people, we, us to get on people's radar. Yeah. I think the last time we put something out, it basically had this landing page from our website. Yeah, good. Also, we could mention the high school project if they're amenable oh, yeah, to that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Look at that. And Pat's already been changed to clerk. Woo it's always easier to do these things while you're thinking of them, as my dad would say. Yep. Yeah, great. It would be great to have something specific about the high school event. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to tell students for years, you can't do it if you're not thinking of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Any other open agenda items? So, how will we get that flyer put together? And uh, I can volunteer to help get it printed or whatever, and okay. and take it to the meeting. I'll, I'll modify the last one I did, but but I want to get from from uh, Jason what he wants to do about the event. Yeah. And well, we could also, if we, no, we won't have Matt. I was going to say something about the survey, but we will not have Matt um, to determine like a next step in a survey. Yeah. Right. Is there any other event that we want to put on there that we know is going to happen? Well, we can always promote Hadley Learns. Yes. I mean, I'm assuming all of us are going to be at the discussion this Thursday night. I will not. I have a work commitment. OK. I will not either. Oh, well. Remind me what that is again. Um, first Thursday, is it seven to eight thirty or seven thirty? Then no, I can't remember. Yeah, um, Hadley learns. Yeah, Hadley learns, and there's um a bunch of articles and podcasts to prep for it. Oh, okay. Which, if you're not already on the Hadley learns email list, I can forward to you. Yeah, that'd be great. Can't promise I'll get to them, but I'll try. Would yeah, you forward they, that to me too? I think I have it somewhere, but I don't know where. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ayla, you you would t are you receiving that information? Yes. Okay. So you're gonna we'll update. Yeah, I remember Shamara mentioning that now. Right. Yeah, it's real easy to get onto that email list, and then you get them automatically which is but good if somebody will take care of of the content of the flyer i will see to um and, and tell me how we can have it printed how we pay for it uh i'll see that it gets to the to the uh, town meeting and put out on a table somewhere Yeah, I was going to say, if if you have the content, um, I'd be happy to kind of work on layout and presentation of it. I don't know if you ju just want to do it eight and a half by 11, or you want to do it as a trifold. Or... Um, I'll, I'll share with everybody what I did last time or, or, you know, what I would come up with. And then if you have thoughts, um, we can, we can do edits. I wonder if, um, 
because you know because we're a town committee i wonder if at town hall oh. they would photocopy maybe yeah worth a try i bet that would be a stretch that's a lot of photocopying I mean, I don't know how many we would have to have, but if you expect 500 people at the meeting, that's 500 copies. No, I, I, I would, I would maybe just put them for whoever wanted to pick them up to pick up, and I think it would be a lot less. Uh, unfortunately, yeah. a lot less. <laughs> that was going to be my next question. Do we just put them out with a little sign and hope that people will be curious enough to say, "What's this?" or do somebody like me stand there and offer them to people and people will take them and not read them and throw them away but people <laughs> who might not have taken them will read them yeah that's a, i would that's be happy to, to hand them to people yeah, yeah probably but handing them out is the more personal touch yeah again i'd be happy to do that because i think it will get more traffic if we do it i think you're right so I need someone to design it and um, and give me something I can have copied. I'll put out a draft. And as we don't have a budget, I guess I'll volunteer to pay for the copying too. I was going to say we can do a bake sale. I'll buy all the brownies and <laughs> that'll support it. <laughs> Instead of buying all the brownies, why don't you just pay for copies? <laughs> there you go. And it'd be easier on my waistline anyway. <laughs> Which reminds me, I won't be in town for the special town meeting. Uh oh. Well, to... how can they call it special then? I know. It's going to be special because I'll be in New York City at a bar mitzvah. <laughs> Mazel tov. Oh. Any other oh. open agenda items? Well, before we leave that, is do we want to try to talk to people to get them to town meeting to stay to the bitter end when our when our item comes up? It's been placed by you know whom as the last item on the on the agenda. So um, you got to sit through all the other stuff. You know what happened a year ago. When it was yeah. out indoor outdoor at the at the firehouse, and after everybody's issues, they left. And then uh, I think it was Mr. Waskevich called a quorum, and we didn't have enough. And so in in that case, the planning board issues didn't get addressed, and they had to, you know slide six months. So they were they promised us to be on the right after the consent. Uh, agenda after that. Yeah. So the planning board issue is up front and we got pushed to the end. By we, you're talking about our committee, our there's issue. Nothing, there's our nothing, issue. there's yeah, no. What is the issue then that we're. We have going, an article? The are article. About the mosquito mitigation. Yeah, the article? spraying thing. Yeah. yeah. The one that affects everybody's health in town yeah. is the last on the agenda. Right. And the organic farmers. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we can certainly encourage anybody who's watching this on Hadley Media yeah. to attend the special town meeting on October 16th. To dress one of the yep, dress layers. Yeah, it's at our public safety complex at 11 a.m. Any other open agenda items? We have our next meeting scheduled for Monday, November 1st. And uh, I'll take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. In favor? Opposed? It's unanimous. All right. Looking forward to seeing all of you next time.
Mm -hmm. Thank you. And congratulations to those of you who haven't turned your heat on yet. <laughs> yeah, mine's still on hold. <laughs> Good night, Happy everybody. Thanks. Yeah. Good night. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you.